Good morning, everybody. We are so thankful you are here this morning. My name's Kurt. I'm the worship director. And if you're a visitor with us, we are doubly thankful that you are here with us this morning. Uh, we do have a few announcements. Uh, Brett has absconded to the traditional service because he has to do the children's message later. So I have to do the announcements myself this morning. And I was totally unprepared and just found out about 30 seconds ago. So here goes nothing. Uh, we are collecting money for a program called The Shoe That Grows. Uh, you can see an example of it. It's out on the uh, table in the covered entryway. It's a shoe that actually uh, has parts that allow it to grow with a child uh, so that they can have one pair of shoes that lasts many years uh, as they grow up in third world countries. Uh, so we are collecting money for that through the month of August. Um, we have a leaf raking day coming up on November 8th. Uh, we'll be meeting here in Bethany at 1.30 to go rake leaves for shut-ins and people that need some help. And uh, if you have any questions about that, you can call Cindy Daniels at the church office. And if there are other announcements, I don't know what they are. Can I just be brutally honest like that? Uh, does anybody have an announcement that they need to make that I didn't? That's a good sign, I think. Let's stand together. God, as we come into this place, you are with us just as you have been and just as you will be. As we come into this place this morning to honor you for who you are and for what you've done, oh, what you have done for us. God, we pause even before we sing this morning. And we say thank you. We remind ourselves of the goodness that you've poured out in our lives already. Even this morning since we got up. God, thank you that you are faithful to us. Thank you that you love us so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
morning. God, we thank you that you are so good to us. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. It looks to me like weakness is a canvas for its strength. My story isn't over. My story's just begun. Failure you won't define me. That's what my father does. It's where you won't define me. Cause that's what my father does. the keys of hell and of death. You are the one that has told us that you go ahead of us to prepare a place for us to be. You are the one that said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And Jesus, you are the 
the, the belonging God. You are the one who invites us to be a part of what you are doing. You are the one that invites us to be a part of your family. Jesus, thank you for inviting us as we are. That you don't demand some sort of perfection for us to come to you. You don't demand for us to give up all of our sins, all of our mistakes. You don't demand for us to punish ourselves. All you do is simply say, you know, all of you who are weary and heavy burdened, come to me and I will give you rest. And so Jesus today, uh, humbly as, as a people, an imperfect people, we come to you and we are so very grateful. Thank you, dear God, for creating a place for us, for giving us a sense of belonging, of being wanted. You know, Lord, we, we pray for our world so much division right now and I can't help but thinking it, things would be so much better if we simply belong to you and so Lord I pray for all of us here today Lord I pray for your church that when we leave places of worship like this that, Lord, we would recognize that we are on the mission field and that we are called to carry that sense of belonging and being wanted into a world that is looking desperately for a place. And, Lord, use us, use us as you see fit. Lord, we continue to pray for you know, the upcoming presidential election. Lord Jesus, we pray in your name against hate and division. Lord, thank you for the blessing, the freedom that we have to vote. Lord, I pray that we would vote, that we would ask you, that we would take our votes before you, and then we would take them to the ballot box. But Lord, we continue to pray for our president, for our vice president, our governor. Lord, those men and women who lead us and serve us, we pray, dear God, for their leadership. Lord, we pray for our local first responders, local police officers. We pray for our schools, dear God. We pray for our teachers. Lord, we pray that those who know you would, would again cast that sense of belonging and being wanted. So now, dear God, we are going to pray to you the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, this prayer of belonging, this prayer that has been prayed for 2,000 years. We lift it to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power glory forever. Amen. And I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and faded all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, 
the one who paid my debt woke up from the dead oh praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the
kids, y'all can come on up and sit right here. Some of you have to come further than others. Sit right here. All right, if you guys want to stand up, we'll wait for these guys. We're going to get in a big circle. Okay, so what we're going to do is play a follow the leader, like dance version of the game. So I'm going to go first and I'll go kind of in the circle right here. And I'm going to do a move and then you guys all do the dance move too. Cool? And then I'm gonna pick someone, then they can pick someone, and we'll just do that real quick, okay? So here we go. You guys gotta do it, that's the idea. Follow the leader, yep. All right, we're boogieing. Okay, now you go in, you do a dance move. Oh, you guys got that? All right, we got it. Okay, Layla, pick someone. All right. Ooh, let's do it. Layla, you got to do it. Follow the leader. All right, now pick someone. Okay, she's doing like a shuffle. We got it. Okay, all right, you want to go now? What's your move? Yeah. Oh, I can't really do it. <laughs> do you guys want to do some dance moves? Yeah, do it. Take a butt. Did it chicken chicken? You got it. Yeah. Oh, she's doing it. Okay. We got it. All right. Okay. Well, those were some awesome dance moves. You can sit down real quick. All right. So that was follow the leader dance version. And we have leaders in our communities and in our governments, right, that are important people. And we look to them to help us run society smoothly, right? But none of those leaders have the authority to open the gates of heaven. So who does have that authority? God. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, that's what it, Jesus has the authority. He is the leader of all leaders, He's our guy. He's our shepherd. So we follow him, and by believing in him, then he opens the gates. He is the gate to heaven. Through Jesus is how we get to heaven. So I encourage you guys to go home and talk to your families about that today, about Jesus and how he's the leader of all leaders. Huh? Okay. And we're going to pray. God, thank you so much for bringing us here together today. We lift up all our leaders in our community and in our government, um, current and future, God, and we just pray that the Holy Spirit may just, just wash over them and rule in their hearts and in their lives and in their decisions. And same for us, that the Holy Spirit may wash over us and rule in our hearts and our lives and in our decisions. And we pray that many, many people come to know Jesus and that he is the only one that can open the gate of heaven. In your name, amen. I don't, I don't think we do pretzels anymore. Sorry. <laughs> Guess that's it. Quick announcement, since I still have the microphone. There is a free concert in Pittsburgh today, a worship concert, that some of us from church are kind of unorganized and just like, going to. If anybody wants to join us, um, we've got a couple empty seats, or if you just want more information about where it is or what it's about, um, come ask me and I can let you know. That was it. Oh, Jeff. Normally is when uh, we would take the offering at this point. 
So let me invite our ushers to come forward at this time. And, uh, <laughs> Do we have any ushers today? Do we have two volunteers for ushers? All right. Awesome. Two or three. We've got a couple coming down. That's great. Let's, uh, let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity we have to participate, Lord, through the giving of our tithes and our offering. Lord, recognizing that what we really need in this life is not found in our checkbook or our bank account, but Jesus, it is found in you and in you alone. So, Lord, we pray for these, these gifts. Lord, bless us as a church with wisdom that as we use these gifts, uh, your kingdom would grow and expand. Jesus, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I don't know if I should start preaching now. Okay. <laughs> Normally, you know, we would have a musical interlude. I thought maybe I could tell jokes, but that's, <laughs> it's never a good thing, right? Me telling jokes. The only good jokes I can tell is when they come out accidentally. Those are really the only ones that are, that are funny. Um, you know, I just want to say something, too. I, I've enjoyed this morning already uh, just seeing the kids, you know, uh, I know we've got, we've got a runner this morning, uh, but there's it's so much joy, right? That is church. Church is alive, right? We are not some dead organization. We love kids. I mean, from the very inception of when we were planning Sunday celebration, it was always meant to be a you know, open, free place. And so, you know, parents, thank you so much. Thank you so, so very much for bringing us uh, your children, because they are a blessing to us, yes. <laughs> Always a blessing, never a bother, and uh, <laughs> they don't know what to do with the offering. What do we do with the offering? I don't even know. <laughs> I work here, honestly, I do work here. I think we'll start. So, you know, um, with Jesus, right, we have this sense of belonging. And I think everybody at somewhere in their being wants to belong, right? We, we will gather uh, around lots of different things, right? Uh, do we have any Steelers fans here this morning? Do we have anybody who will admit to not being a Steelers fan? Oh, we got a brave soul over here. Got another one. Caleb. Yeah. Um, you know, we will we, we love to belong to certain things. We we want to identify. Um, and Jesus understands that. And I think, you know, with Jesus we have we have a sense of belonging. And uh, you know, so we're gonna talk more about that today, but let me read for you our scripture this morning from uh, John chapter 10, 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he, has brought them all, when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come in before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. 
You know, God created us, and, and like I said already, God has created within us this desire to belong. Um, whether it's to a team or to a club, God wants us to belong. And so having created us, Jesus knows this, and Jesus is a master teacher. And so he would always draw people's attention to, uh, to what was around them, to what they would understand, and then move them from that point to a deeper, to a deeper uh, spiritual insight. You know, for instance, he would see a man sowing seed, and so he told the people about these different soils. And a man goes out and scatters the seed, and it falls on this type of soil, and this type of soil, and that type of soil. Talking about the different types of hearts that the seed of God or the word of God falls on people. And he was looking for the kingdom of God is like looking for a lost coin. And he told us that God's love for us was like the love of a father whose son had left home. In the passage that we read this morning, Jesus again uses this word picture. And we don't know why he chose this picture, but we know that he wanted to talk to us or teach us about the kingdom of God. Now, the sheep pen was an enclosure, right? Uh, sometimes it was a uh, rough stone or a mud brick structure, uh, partially roofed, if at all. Sometimes it was around the house. Sometimes it would be out in the countryside. Sometimes they would even use a cave in the hills. And the shepherd would often sleep across the entryway to protect the sheep from wild animals and thieves. It reminds me when, you know, Sophia was, was younger and, and uh, would tend to wander a little bit in the middle of the night, right? <laughs> she went, Sophia, stay in your room. Um, I remember laying in, on, in front of, uh, laying across her threshold, right, as uh, trying to get her to go to sleep and knowing that for her to get out of the sheep pen, out of her bedroom, right, she would have to cross me. And, uh, but it was also a comfort for her. You know, she knew her dad was there and that nothing was going to happen to her because dad was right there. Now, obviously, the shepherd would only enter the sheep pen by the gate. However, someone who wanted to harm or steal the sheep would not come through the gate. They would sneak through uh, some other way. Right, they would try to break in. Now imagine you know, you're driving down the street and you saw someone trying to get into a home or a, a work shed through a broken window. And your first inclination is going to think that they were trying to enter someplace where they didn't belong. And we get this idea of, of safety, of protection, of being enclosed, of having a gate. Right? It's, it's something that we can see. It's something we can understand. You know, this illustration, you know, you think about what is the point? And I think what Jesus is trying to communicate to us is that we have a place where we belong. We have a place where we're wanted. Now, here's the way Jesus puts it in verse 9. He says, I am the gate, and whoever enters through me will be saved. And he's saying to anybody who will listen, if you want a place to belong, if you want a place safe to be, I'm it. I will be that safe place for you. Now, the Pharisees believed themselves to be the guardians of the people. And in leading up to this discussion in John 10, uh, the Pharisees asked Jesus if he thinks that the Pharisees were blind guides. And so this is how he responds in John chapter 10. The text is, is clear in how he answers, and he implies that these Pharisees we're, we're nothing more than thieves and robbers. And Jesus makes it clear that, that he alone can lead the people to a restored relationship with God. That Jesus alone is our redeemer. As you might guess, right, the, the leaders of this time were not happy with Jesus' words. A little bit further in John chapter 10, uh, verse 19, we see that they even accuse Jesus of being the devil. And, and, and oddly enough, I think there are people in our day and age who believe exactly the same. Right? Jesus' claim to be the sole way to salvation could be considered fighting words today. You know, in our society, the, the preeminent virtue is tolerance. And anybody who seems to be intolerant is condemned. 
Now, we're to be tolerant of everybody, right, except for those who disagree with our point of view, right? We can be tolerant with the Browns fans, <laughs> only somewhat. Definitely no Cowboy fans. But anybody who claims to, to have a hold of absolute truth, even in their day, as in ours, is deemed to be a bigot. And Jesus' words don't play very well in, in today's modern context. Now imagine somebody claiming that the only way to eternal life was through them. And they do this, and it, it, makes it, it implies that everybody else is in error, and it doesn't sound very open. But Jesus doesn't have to be open, because Jesus is telling the truth. All right, Jesus is not one of many ways to God. Jesus isn't a good option. You know, in another one of the great I am statements in John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus kind of takes, the, takes that, 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 the possibility of many ways to God off the table. Because what kind of monster would Jesus be if there is one way to God for him to claim that it, there wasn't? And so out of love, out of a sense of wanting people to belong, Jesus always told us the truth. Right? If you, if you want to belong, if you want to be a part of this family, there is only one way. You've got to come through the gate. You've got to come through through Jesus. You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer, right? We need to stand up for everybody. Nobody deserves uh, to have unequal rights in this world, right? We, we, people should be able to live where they want to live, work where they want to work. Uh, there should be some freedom with that. However, it does not mean that, that we are called to stop having faith in something because it might offend someone. You know, just because we believe that every person should have the basic freedoms in our world today doesn't mean that we can approve of or that we should approve of everything that is being taught and practiced. I mean, notice that Jesus talks about being the good shepherd, and it's a much different picture than the world gives today. Today's culture sees Jesus, so the Jesus of the Bible, as being bad for people because of that intolerant nature. But this isn't the picture that Jesus paints. And the sheep delight to hear in his voice. And why is that? It, it, it happened because they, they knew, they understood that this voice led them to food, led them to safety, led them to help in times of trouble. This voice the voice that the sheep would hear, was concerned about them. The voice belonged to a friend. You know, it's that same sense we, we get when we, when we crack open our Bibles and we, we read this love letter from God to us. The God who desperately loves us, who wants to be in a relationship with us. We delight in our shepherd the same way. You know, Jesus knows his sheep by name. You know, I have a, in my family, my extended family, we have uh, identical twins. So my aunt and uncle had uh, identical twins. They were a little bit older than I was, but uh, for years, I mean, it's only been within like the last 10 or so years as they've gotten older and one has remained skinny and one has kind of expanded a little bit, um, that I've been able to even tell them apart, right? But my uncle Dick and Aunt Carol always knew which one was Kevin and which one was Keith. I couldn't tell, but mom and dad could. You know, and the shepherd is able to tell each sheep, you know, our Jesus, our Savior knows each one of us by name. In the Expositor Bible Commentary uh, paints this beautiful picture about a, a sheep pen and what the shepherd does. And it says, when the sheep returned to the fold at night after a day of grazing, the shepherd would stand in the doorway of the pen and it would inspect each sheep as they came in. 
If a sheep was scratched and wounded by thorns, the, the shepherd would anoint it with oil to facilitate its healing. If the sheep was thirsty, the shepherd would give him water. And after all the sheep had been counted and brought into the pen, the shepherd would lay down across the doorway so that no intruder, man or beast, could enter without his knowledge. You know, the shepherd became the door. Now, this is our Jesus. This is our giver of abundant life. Jesus is not here to give us a bunch of thrills, stuff, and an absence of worry. Jesus came to breathe life into us. And he wishes to renew and enrich and deepen our lives. He is the one who gives our lives meaning and direction and purpose in all that we do. And there's no other life than the life of a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, I've got to be honest. I mean, this sounds like a, a good person to me. Right? Jesus is definitely a good person. It sounds like Jesus is extending his love to anybody who is around him. He does this and he, and he points us to, in the direction of eternity. Again, not wanting anyone to, to not know him, but for all to come to everlasting life. And that's why he says he's the gate. Because he doesn't want us to miss that truth. Now, we need to learn our master's voice. And there's only one way we can do to train ourselves to know the voice of God. And that is to become a student of the word of God. We must not be content with just a, a few verses read each week. I mean, as eloquently as I read them. But we can't, we can't rely just on what we hear on Sunday. We've got to be in our word. We have to be in the Bible, hearing what God is saying to us. We must trust a true shepherd for salvation. Because it's not enough to merely recognize the gate. Right? You can know Jesus as, you get, as the gate. You can know Jesus as the true shepherd. You can know Jesus as the only way of salvation and still not be a part of the flock. To belong requires you to, to make a choice, an act of the will. It was explained to me like this years ago. I remember when uh, Jan and I got married. You know, so Jan and I, we, uh, we were engaged for about nine months, and I remember waiting to, on that day. I even remember, you know, standing there up in front of the congregation waiting for my bride to come down uh, the aisle. I had lots of emotions, right? I was excited. But Jan wasn't my wife yet. Even though I had all those ooey-gooey emotions, right? She still wasn't my wife. Intellectually, I know that I had already given the, the you know, marriage license to the pastor. pastor had probably already signed it. That in just 10 minutes, we would be husband and wife. But we weren't yet, right? Because it's not emotions and it's not intellect. But it wasn't until, you know, I'm looking at Jan and the pastor's talking to us and in front of our family and in front of God when he says, you know, will you be Jan's husband? I will. Will you be Chris's wife? Jan did say I will. So that's good. And it's a lot like that with, with our walk with Jesus, right? Because we can know, we can have lots of emotions, right? We come to church, we get caught up in the music at times, we love seeing each other, and we think, oh, this is awesome, right? So we can, we can be very emotional about the gate, about our shepherd. But that doesn't make us part of the flock. We can know the Bible frontwards and backwards, Right? We could have read, we could have studied, we could have known all of this. But intellectual, you know, knowing it up here doesn't mean we know it here. And if we want to be a part of the flock, if we want to understand that with Jesus we have belonging, means that we have to, as an act of our will, accept Jesus. 
where we, you know, we, we say to Jesus, and there are no magic words. There are lots of different prayers out there that you can pray, and it's not so much the prayer, it's not so much the words, it's the attitude of your heart. You know, something like, you know, Lord Jesus, I need you. You know, thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Come into my life and make me the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you for providing a place for me always. Amen. And so crying out to Jesus that way is like Jesus opening the gate and saying, come on in. Right? You have a home with me. Come on in. And so as, uh, we're going to pray and... and um, during, our, during this prayer, I just want to invite you, if, if you haven't made that decision yet, right? If, if you know Jesus emotionally, or if you know Jesus intellectually, but haven't made that, that move to know him as an act of your will, you know, I want to give you an opportunity this morning to do that. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come forward, right? It is between you and God. I would love to talk with you about your decision because it is just the most important decision you can make in your life, but you are not going to be put on, the, on point this morning. So we can just breathe deep, relax, and if God leads you to pray that prayer, then please do so. So let's pray. And gracious God, we are so thankful for you. We're thankful that you are the God who lays down in front of that doorway for us, that provides a protection and a, and a place of belonging. And so, Jesus, we come to you this morning. And for those of us who do know you and for those of us who, who want to know you, we simply pray uh, that you would become real to us that we would know and experience uh, this, this Jesus who paid everything so that we could belong to the family of God. And Jesus, thank you for forgiving our sins. Thank you for giving our lives purpose and our lives hope. Jesus, make us the kind of people you want us to be. You know, make me the, the man or the woman of God you intend for me to be. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, it's in your name that we pray.
now is your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, when I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found peace and I deny. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still truth even gets better because in our world you know we we have shades of gray right we can easily think that that belonging to Jesus is a little bit like a dimmer switch right we can turn it down and we're not so sure we can turn it up really sure right and it's very difficult I think for some of us it was for me for a very long time to say that I knew I was going to go to heaven, right? It sounds a little bit boisterous, a little, you know, like I'm full of myself. But it's what God's word says. And 1 John 5, uh, 
John writes, and this is the testimony, so this is the truth, this is, the, this is our story, that he who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son does not have the life. I have written this so that you may know that you have eternal life. You know, our, our Jesus loves us so much, and he wants us to belong so much that it is either zero or 100%. You, you either don't know Jesus or you are guaranteed heaven. And so if, if, if you know Jesus, you belong. If you want to know Jesus, Jesus is waiting there with his arms open wide for you. Our Jesus wants you. You are wanted. You belong. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for this opportunity we have to, to celebrate you. And Lord, you know, through uh, mistakes and miscommunications, uh, we're grateful, dear God, that uh, you are not looking for our excellence. You are simply looking for a heart yielded to you. And so, Jesus, we give ourselves to you. We give ourselves to your mission. Use us, Jesus, as you will. Jesus, we love you and thank you for loving us. And it's in your name, dear Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful week. See you next Sunday.